Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rochelle from Rochelle Handmade Designs, which you can follow me on Instagram with that name, as well as Facebook. I also have Facebook groups, which you can also connect with me there as well. I'll put them right here. Now in today's video, we will go ahead and sew that last top as part of the top series part two springs tops. So in today's video, we are sewing the V-neck top utilizing Butterick 6731. Now in this video, I will be sewing along to view C on the pattern. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right on into the new video. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the supplies that you will need in order to construct this V-neck top. The first thing you will need is your pattern. I am doing Butterick 6731. Now on this pattern, I will be doing view B um, on this pattern, which is this view right here. You'll also need a pair of scissors. I use one for paper, one for fabric. I never mix the two. Now I use the scissors at the sewing machine only. I cut using rotary cutters, one for paper, one for fabric. I never mix the two there. I also use marking tools. I have my disappearing ink, my white chalk, and then I also have the pink chalk um, because I'm using striped fabric. I have a seam rip ripper just in case I make a mistake and need to rip out my seams. And then I also have a point turner as well. I use the clippers only at the sewing machine and then I have two pens. That's all the supplies that you will need in order to construct this V-neck top. So let's go ahead and get into the pattern pieces you will need in order to construct your top. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the instructions quickly. Now for view B, which is the top that I am sewing right here, um, the only pieces you will need is pattern piece number one, two, three, four, five, seven, and eight. So I'm going to go ahead and show you those pattern pieces. The only one that you need to um, have wrong sides up when you cut around is pattern piece number two, but I will document that when I show you the pattern pieces. So let's go ahead and get right on into the pattern pieces. All right. So the first pattern piece that you will need is pattern piece number one, which is your tie in. You need to cut to a fabric. The next pattern piece that you will need is pattern piece number two, which is your front for view A, B, and C, and you need to cut one on fold of fabric. Just make sure that you have the, the um, pattern piece wrong sides up and then cut around. Next pattern piece you will need is pattern piece number three, which is your back. You need to cut one on fold of fabric. Next pattern piece you will need is pattern piece number five, which is your back neck facing. You need to cut one on fold of fabric and one on fold of interfacing. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number four, which is your front neck facing. You need to cut one on fold of fabric and one on fold of interfacing. Next pattern piece you will need is pattern piece number eight, which is your sleeve band. You need to cut two of fabric and interface two. And the last pattern piece you will need is pattern piece number seven, which is your sleeves for view B, you need to cut two. Now, one thing you will also need as part of the supplies is a uh, 14, 12 to 14 inch zipper, and it needs to be an invisible zipper. Now that's all your pattern pieces that you will need in order to construct the V-neck top. So let's go ahead and get right on into the sewing. All right, so the first thing you want to do is go ahead and grab pattern piece number one, which is your tie ends to go ahead and construct your tie ends. So the first thing you want to do is create your hem and your curve. Now around the curve edge, so from here to here, you want to stitch using a basting stitch three eighths of an inch. So create a a stitching line three eighths of an inch seam allowance around this curve. Now the hem allowance for the top and the bottom is five eighths of an inch seam allowance. So you want to create from this dot here all the way down, 
you want to create a 5 8 of an inch stitching line press to that line and then press up again so what it's going to look like is you're going to have a stitching line 5 8 of an inch seam allowance top and bottom you're going to press to that line and then press up again stitching on the right side using a regular length stitch you're going to stitch from that dot all the way down to the end so that's what you're going to do for your top and your bottom and just make sure around this curve you create a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance stitching line press to that stitching line and then press up again and encase it using making it a narrow hem so go ahead and do that okay so now that i have went ahead and did a narrow hem across the top and the bottom and went ahead and um, stitched the curved edge as well and then i went ahead and pulled up my gathers along um, this end right here so now just go ahead and grab your top and I pinned one side I'm going to tell you what you need to do and pin the other side so with right side up you're going to pin the ties to the inner dots with wrong side to right side so just make sure that curved edge is facing up so this tie goes to this side your right side when looking at it the other tie see how this end is facing up it goes to the other side so just go ahead and pin your tie now you're going to match that dot to the dot up at the top and pin and you're going to match the other dot to the bottom one now if it's too short go ahead and pull loosen up some of the gathers distribute it very well and then pin at that other dot you do not want any pulling on your top so just make sure you distribute your gathers evenly and then you're going to pin And what you're going to do is go to the sewing machine and baste across. You're just going to baste the um, tie ends down. So go ahead and do that. All right, so now that I have the tie ends basted on, on both sides, what you're going to do is go ahead and turn your top wrong side up. Now I have pinned one side for my tucks. I'm going to show you how you do the other side. Now I'm going to turn mine so you could see, but what you're going to do is let me move my ties out the way so you're able to see. Now what you want to do is take these two dots match them up together and take the bottom two dots and match those up together. So how you do that is you take the take them and match them up together. So you're going to match this dot with that dot and this dot with this dot. So it's kind of like creating a fishtail dart, but they're not called darts. They're actually called tucks. So I'm going to take this dot right here and match it up with my other dot and pin and I'm going to do the same thing to the bottom one I'm going to pin right here look on the other side make sure that it's matching up and it is right there and then I'm going to pin and then I'm going to stitch from dot to dot back stitching at the beginning and at the end and then press my seams towards the center so go ahead and do that okay so now that I have went ahead and sewn my tucks and pressed them towards the inside go ahead and put your um, top aside put this piece aside and grab your put your front aside and grab your back which is pattern piece number three and what you want to do is go ahead and make the darts in the back. 
So basically you have two fishtail darts right here. So what you're going to do is turn it to the inside and go ahead and make your fishtail darts. Now I have done this many of times, so I'm just going to go ahead and tell you what you need to do. You need to bring them together and pin in two opposite directions. Start from the center, go to one end, and then start in the center and uh, go to the other end making your fishtail darts. So go ahead and do your fishtail darts now. Okay, so now I went ahead and made my fishtail darts and pressed them towards the center. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and turn my back over and with and grab my front uh, piece. And then with right sides together, I'm going to attach at the front to back at the shoulder seams. So just make sure you are matching up your notches right here at the shoulder seam. Let me grab some pins and pin in place. And then you're going to pin across both shoulder seams. And using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, you're gonna back stitch at the beginning and at the end, finish off your seams and press them towards the back. So go ahead and do that. Okay, so now that I have sewn my front to my back at shoulder seams, I went ahead and pressed my seam towards the back and then I went ahead and top stitch across the um, back shoulder seams. Now that that is done, go ahead and move your top to the side quickly and then grab your facing piece. So you have pattern piece number four and five, your front and back neck facings. And what you're going to do is with right sides together, this is pattern piece number four, facing up, you're going to attach four to five at shoulder seams. So go ahead matching up the notches, go ahead and pin at the notch on both sides. And then using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and at the end and press your seams open. So go ahead and do that. Okay, so I went ahead and attached my front facing to my back facing at the shoulders. And then after uh, using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, I went ahead and pressed it, start stitched and then pressed them open and then finished off my uh, outer edge of my facing. So go ahead and grab your top. And what you're going to do is with right sides together, you're going to pin your facing to your top. So just make sure you are pinning with right sides together. So I'm going to start pinning at my shoulder seams. So I'm going to pin right here at my shoulder seam. And then make sure you are notching, matching up the dots as well. So there's a dot right here and it match up with this dot right here. So just make sure you are matching up those dots on both sides as well as the shoulder seam and pin all the way around. So go ahead and do that. All right, now using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, you're gonna, I'm gonna start at my side seam and go all the way around. And then when I get to the dot right here at the V, I'm going to pivot and then go in the opposite direction and sew around the, the other end. So, you're go, so I'm going to start, actually I'm gonna start at this dot where my V is, sew all the way around and stop back at this dot. Back stitching at the beginning and at the end. Once I'm done with that, I'm gonna go ahead and trim it down and then under stitch. Once I finish under stitching, that basically you would press your seams up towards the facing and then under stitch around your facing and then turn your facing to the inside, tacking down the facing at the shoulder seams. So go ahead and do that. So now that I have sewn on my facing, what I'm going to do is go ahead and clip through, clip to that dot in this V section. So just clip 
to it, do not clip through it. And it just opens it up right here. And make sure you did not clip your uh, top. So it just opens it right here. So now what you're going to do is go ahead and press your seams up. We'll trim it down if you have not already. And then press your seams towards the facing so you can understitch. So you're gonna trim it down, press your seam towards the facing, and then understitch on the facing. So go ahead and do that. Okay, so now that I went ahead and sewn on my facing, I sewn all the way around using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, trimmed it down. Once I trimmed it down, I clipped into my um, V right here. And then after I clipped into my V, I understitched. Once I understitched, I uh, went ahead and add my label and then tacked the um, facing down to the uh, shoulder seam. So the facing is not flopping around while I'm wearing it. So I did all of that. And now the next step that you need to do is go ahead and turn it right sides together, front to back with right sides together and you're going to sew your side seams. So just turn it right sides out, make sure that your ties are out of your way and you're going to pin right sides together and sew up the side seams. Now you have a notch right here, so make sure you pin at your notches. And then I'm going to pin at the top. I'm going to pin at the bottom and then pin the length of the side seam. And you're going to do this for both sides. And using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and at the end, and then finish off your seam allowance. So just a quick correction, do not sew both side seams. What you're going to do is sew the right side seam only. So while you have your garment right sides together with your front facing you, what you're going to do is go ahead and pin and sew just the right side seam. Using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, you're going to back stitch at the beginning and at the end and then finish off the seams. Now on this side, you will be adding a zipper to that side. So what you want to do is go ahead and pin this side. Pin at your notch. You're going to pin at the bottom as well. And it all still depends on what size zipper you chose. Now I chose a 12 to 14 inch zipper. So I'm going to measure down 14 inches <laughs> and then go ahead and pin. So my 14 inches is if I measure from this line, which is zero. So I'm going to go to zero and measure 14 inches is where this pin is right here. Now, if you did a 12 inch zipper, you need to just pin at that 12 inch marking. And what you're going to do is back stitch at the beginning, at the very bottom, come up to the dot, or if you made a, if you just put a pin there, you're gonna sew to that using a regular length stitch. Once you get to that, you're gonna back this uh, pin or dot or whatever you made, you're going to back stitch and then base all the way up the remainder of your side seam. You're only doing this to your left side seam. So go ahead and do that. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a idea of what I did before I sew on my zipper. So what I did was went ahead and sew 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance on the right uh, seam allowance, okay? So I went ahead and sewn um, using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I went ahead and sew, uh, sewn that 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance from top to bottom and then went ahead and finished off the seams there. On the other side, first what I did was I went ahead and searched my seams because this is where the zipper is going to be. I went ahead and uh, finished off my seam allowance first. 
then sewn using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, press my seams open, and then apply interfacing to the zipper area to stabilize that area. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and um, put in my invisible zipper. Now if you go back to the last top, which was the Empire Line top, I went ahead and showed how I installed my zipper. So you can see that video. Just go ahead and look up and you will see that I put it in the cards in order for you to see how I install the zipper. So go ahead and install your invisible zipper to the left side of your garment and finish it off as well. Okay, so now that I have went ahead and sewn in my invisible zipper and finished it off. Now, I know my zipper is extending past um, the top portion. That's perfectly fine because once I attach my sleeve, it will not extend. It will stop right here and I will trim off the excess. However, I am not doing that right now because if I do that, my zipper will go straight off the zipper pull and then I have to put in a new zipper. So therefore, I'm just leaving it just like it is right now. And once I attach my sleeve, put my sleeve together and attach it, this part will be finished off with no problem. All right, so now that you have your front and back attached and your zipper attached, go ahead and move this out the way and grab your sleeves. Okay, so I went ahead and grabbed my sleeve and that pattern piece number seven, I did one of my sleeves already, so I'm gonna show you how to do this sleeve. So you have two rows of gathering stitches right here. So in between the notch that you have right here, you're going to gather just a little bit. So just gather that in. All right, so now that you have gathered the bottom with right sides together, you're going to attach your underarm seams. Now using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, back to stitch at the beginning and at the end, and then finish off your seams. Okay, so I went ahead and sewn my underarm seam and then finished off my edge. I went ahead and gathered a little bit more for to prepare, to prepare that for my sleeve band. So go ahead and move your sleeve out of the way for just one second and grab your sleeve band, which is pattern piece number eight. Now what you're going to do is you're gonna create a basting stitch at 5 8 of an inch seam allowance at the very bottom. Now you have a notch up here. You do not wanna create that 5 8 of an inch uh, stitching line, basting line at the top where that notch is. You wanna do it on the unnotched edge. Once you do that, you're going to press up that 5 8 of an inch seam allowance and then you're gonna trim it down to 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim mine down now. Now that I have went ahead and trimmed my um, seams down to 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, what you're going to do is go ahead with right sides together, you want to pin. There is a notch, so match up that notch. Pin there, and using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and at the end, and press your seams open. All right, so now that I have stitched my sleeve bin together, with right sides together, using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, I pressed my seams open, I went ahead and pressed uh, this portion up as well gave it a really nice press now go ahead and grab your sleeves now what you want to do is gather your sleeves in between the notch so if you have not went ahead and gathered, go ahead and gather that area because you will need to gather that area for the sleeve to fit on your sleeve band so what you want to do is go ahead and with right sides together go ahead and put your sleeve inside of your sleeve band. Now matching up that notch, you're going to pin. Now I'm gonna turn mine this way so I can see it really good. I'm gonna pin at that notch. Then I'm going to pin at the underarm seams. Now if you did what I did and sewn the seams together, make sure that this um, the seam where you pressed it, you pressed it towards the back of your garment, which is to my left. 
and then you want to go ahead and pin there. So if you open it, turn it over, it should be going to your right. If you had it the way I had, it should be going to your left because this side is the back of my seam. Now what you want to do is go ahead and where you gathered, make sure that you gathered enough for this for the sleeve to fit on the sleeve band. So make sure you are distributing your gathers evenly all the way around and pin. So go ahead and do that. Now using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, you're gonna back stitch at the beginning and at the end. Now I'm gonna start at my underarm seam, back stitch at the beginning, and then come all the way around 5 eighths of an inch and back stitch at the end. And then I'm gonna trim off my seam allowance and press my seams towards the facing, the sleeve band facing. So go ahead and do that. Okay, so now that I went ahead and stitched the sleeve band onto the sleeve using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, I went ahead and trimmed it down and I pressed my seams up towards the sleep band or down towards the sleep band, but just make sure that your seam allowance is pressed towards the sleep band. Once I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and um, make sure that my pressed edge of my sleeve band is a little past that stitching line on the sleeve. And then I'm going to just go ahead and stitch in the ditch. Now you can use a hand needle to slip stitch but I'm just going to, because this is not like a business type shirt, I'm just gonna use it as a casual shirt to wear. I'm just going to go ahead and stitch in the ditch. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and press. I'm gonna turn it right sides out so you can see it. So what I'm gonna do is give it a good press once again. If you want, you can pin, but once you press it, it would no, normally stay in place. So just make sure that you press all the way around and you're going to stitch. I want to say about a fourth of an inch away from the seam. You can either stitch in the ditch or you can stitch right on top of the sleeve band. So go ahead and do that. Back stitch at the beginning and at the end. Okay, so I went ahead and stitched on my sleeve band and then I just completely top stitched close to the end in the edge, catching in that under that uh inside sleep in the casing part of it the inside edge sorry about that um, but I just went ahead and top stitch on top of it because it is just going to be a casual top that I'm going to wear instead of slip, uh, stitching in the ditch so go ahead and grab your top and now what you're going to do is go ahead and attach now I am doing mine on the zipper side I already did the other side of my sleeve right here so what I'm going to do is go ahead and zip my zipper up. However, I'm going to leave a little bit open, about 5 eighths of an inch, okay? I'm gonna do that, and then what I'm gonna do is go ahead and attach my sleeves, all right? So with right sides together, I'm going to attach at the underarm seams. Now, if I pull it all the way up. Yes, I could attach it. However, I won't be able to stitch it all the way. So I'm just going to attach it right here. That's my underarm seam. And then you want to pin at your notches and then pin all the way around. All right, so now that I have it pinned all the way around, I'm going to start at my underarm seam using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning. So all the way around using a normal length stitch, 5 eighths of an inch, and then uh, finish back stitch at the beginning and at the end, and then go ahead and finish off my edge um, with my serger. Once I do that, the only thing that's left to do is go ahead and hem my the bottom part of my top. So basically what I what I did is create a fourth of the inch seam allowance and then one and one fourth inch seam allowance. Now the hem allowance is one and a fourth. So what you're going to do is create a basting stitch one and one fourth, press up and then 
you're going to press to that one fourth of a line. So I made a basting stitch at one fourth of an inch, pressed to that line, made another basting stitch, one and one fourth, and then uh, pressed that one and one fourth inch and then close and stitch close to the edge. Now this stitch was done at about five eighths of an inch seam allowance. So once you hem your top, you are all done. bell so you are notified every time I upload a new video. Also, like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, keep sewing.